the Twitter thing is not new. That was like teased last week. I think Elon made a like an offer, a formal offer last week, and I think board members and shareholders kind of goffed at it at first. It looks like they ended up feeling like it was a good time to sell or whatever. But man, it goes to show you, man, this dude got money. Just straight up bought Twitter. I mean, there's what, a handful of apps slash social media platforms of that magnitude, and he just bought one. Yeah, hot take. Let's just get right into that while we wait for a moose sighting. Hot take on that topic real fast. Um, I don't know how I feel about Twitter being owned by one mega billionaire. <laughs> uh, I Elon's a cool dude. I know Starlink's a thing. We talk about Starlink being exciting and all that good stuff. Right. But uh yeah, I don't necessarily like um I don't like one private entity just owning uh basically what has become a platform for so many people across so many countries to be able to say their mind, regardless of the man, regardless of what you think of him. Uh I just don't like all that control being in the hands of one guy. You know, I think Barry might be onto something. You know, Barry chimes in. He says, Twitter earnings notice comes out on Thursday. It's It probably looks bad, and they probably realized, oh, this is uh, the best time for us to sell. Yeah, I know why they did it. Everything always the comes company, down to money. But You know, Dennis, the company's not – it doesn't run well. Like, if you think about the future as the way it was structured or is structured currently without whatever Elon plans on it. We have no idea. He might not do anything with it. He just may want to just own it. I mean, he's but, a uh, busy guy, and I'm sure he'll probably will take a pretty hands-off approach and probably just um, – he'll probably just hire someone else to kind of manage it for him. But because he is who he is, and there's clearly some polarization around it because politics, um, I don't think it's good for Twitter overall. I think they're going to lose a lot of talented personnel. Personnel. Mm-hmm which I think is bad. Uh, and I also just think that, um, I don't know, man. I just, uh, I think that having Twitter be a public company with backlash uh, from stockholders in mind was actually a good thing for that kind of platform to make them kind of stay on their toes and, you know, not let um, things get too crazy on that platform. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think the bigger issue is um, people thinking that he's going to be some kind of, I don't know, free speech vigilante. Yeah, I don't think you he's going to be the second coming of Jesus here when it comes yeah, to exactly. free speech. Exactly. And that's I, and that's my problem. Yeah, but the so so what I think this boils down to is this: he is going to take over this company. Essentially, is he going to come in and change a bunch of policies? Is he going to come in and change censorship? Is he going to come in and change the board? I think there are a couple smaller things that he could do to make the company better, you know, just to make them uh, like a like a legitimate, you know, just a solid company that can generate revenue and actually have growth. Because a lot of users have moved away from Twitter for whatever reason, and they've gone to other platforms to promote themselves, specifically Instagram, right? So, like, in my estimation, I view the Twitter company in terms of its like earnings and reach and all that it's kind of like the stepchild of social media i mean it's great for like fast updates and news breaking stuff you know i i like it for that uh but it it's like everybody has moved towards instagram yeah you know, there's I just a lot wanna... of tiktok users and there's a lot of snapchat users so like they have competitors that are doing the growth thing better than them and awesome. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to address a comment real quick. To anyone that thinks Elon's going to be the champion of free speech, I want you guys to actually look very closely at the things that Elon Musk was willing to do in order to get into China. Remember what he tried to do. There's plenty of news articles that talk about the compromises that he has. China has a big sway, a big amount of influence over Elon because of his other more profitable businesses which is why it's never great to have one specific entity that you can hold leverage over um, when it comes to business decisions. Um, so, because I, I just see a lot of comments talking about how he's going to be this champion of free speech. There, he's well, a, I mean, yeah. he, that's what he's saying. You know, um, 
I think, Dennis, you're right. It's important to hold your reservations about what he's actually going to do. He may have good intentions, Dennis, but, you know, it's hard to shake some of the things that come with having these type of platforms. Just remember, the road paved to hell was made out of good intentions. Right. Yeah, that's a solid uh, saying. Uh, it definitely, definitely holds true in a lot of instances. Yeah, I agree, Tech Guy 32. It's time will tell for sure. Oh, we got a bomb. Santiago, thanks for the super sticker, buddy. Giant pair character waving flags and turning around, making the buildings in front of him tremble. <laughs> thanks, Santiago. Thanks, man. You're you're always so generous and supportive of us, man. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you so much, and uh, glad to have you on the show and stopping by to tune in tonight. Incredible of you. Um, yeah, so I saw another comment. I think, let me see if I can figure out who it was. It may have been alternate reality. That's very possible, man. People with a lot of money, wealthy people, do some strange things with strange motives. It's very possible he looked at this like a chance to have, you know, some some type of thing. You know, it's like a like a trophy. I mean, like, it hey, makes I, sense. Who owns who owns Wall uh, the Wall Street Journal? What's his what's his name? I don't remember his name, but I, I I know of the person you're speaking of. Yeah, and remember, he tried running for office at the same time as well while he was at it. I mean, rich, yeah. powerful people do rich people things. I'm just saying, like, look, the only thing I'm getting at is literally it could be Jesus Christ himself, and I wouldn't feel great about one man having complete initiative to take a, a platform of this nature in any direction. I mean, people really don't like Facebook, right? Why do people really not like Facebook? Because Mark Zuckerberg is the ultimate decision maker regardless. Right. And we don't like Mark Zuckerberg. What's well, policies, Dennis, I think is the bigger problem. So like, what are, what are Elon's policies going to be the same? Are they going to be different? Are we going to see the transparency that he's promising? That's one of the things he mentioned. Uh, Murdoch. That's right. Thanks. MS. The, um, one of the things he offered was an outlook into, the algorithm right you know, which, which but, is kind of interesting now if he did that dennis if he legitimate like people could understand an algorithm that's used for social media that's a game changer that would be great but i want everybody to remember something when a company is private they can choose not to share literally anything with us at least when twitter was public we got to see like earnings reports and see like ah yes twitter was selling our information to make stuff Elon could just lie <laughs> and just say he's not doing that and we wouldn't be any wiser because he has no no requirements to share any of his earnings or how he's making money off the platform. I know a lot of people were making some things out of this with uh, Trump and all that. I don't think this has anything to do with Trump, nor do I think it even matters. I think this is just um, I think it's just the fact that he made the purchase. They accepted his offer. You know, he's coming out guns a talking about freedom of speech. We'll see what Twitter is like a year from now. How long do you think it would take to actually change things at Twitter? Regardless, for good or for worse, how long do you think till we start to see changes? I mean, if you really wanted to, like seriously, if you really wanted to. Like, could he do it tomorrow if he took over tonight? I would say like maybe a month max. You think a month? Okay. I'm yeah. saying max a month if you really wanted to. I don't, I mean, I guess technically tomorrow, but the reason why I say not tomorrow is because depending on the changes that he wants to make, it's going to require some testing. So I'd say a month max. Santiago's got some reservations. Should it remain public? I hope going private does not mean less accountability. And that's exactly my issue. That's exactly, yeah. that's exactly that, the issue that I have with this type, with this type of platform. That is the exact issue that I have. Hmm. Interesting take. Oh, snap. We got a super chat from Blind Tech Adventures up in the ante here. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it, Nimmer. Great cast as always. Thank you for all you do. No, thank you, man. Thanks for all your support and uh, always being here, you know, on the, the podcast and the live stream and making this this thing awesome. We, I mean, I, I love doing the podcast. I, I know you guys watch all my videos. I know you guys see my speed testing videos all the news coverage, but legit, the podcast is special to me. I love the podcast, and uh, the engagement I get with you guys is always so enjoyable. I, I try to read all your, you know, comments and the live chat, and it's always, um, it's always fun, and I enjoy it very much. 
Don't you also, think that is the best part of the the channels, the podcast, man? Oh, a hundred percent agree. Yeah. The podcast format just allows for so many things to be talked about that you can't necessarily fit into like a episodic um fifteen minute like sound bite, you know what I mean? Yeah. Side note, uh Chuck touched on something. So the people that were saying like who really cared about free speech and stuff like that. I mean, there's other platforms out there. There's Trump's true social. There's the actual thing that true social was based off of that. They literally just plagiarized. That was an open source social media <laughs> website. So there's other solutions out there um, that if you feel more confident with one man owning, there's your answer. No one forces anybody to use Twitter. You know what I'm saying? But I think that Twitter, despite being the stepchild, as you called it, uh, I think it had an important part. It was one of the few companies that didn't have its tentacles owned by Facebook and its megacorp. And it was also one of the few publicly owned platforms that was available on the Internet. So, man, the, the live chat tonight is absolutely tremendous. You guys are killing it tonight. I'm reading all these comments. OK, so here's some of them, Dennis. Really good stuff, too. Barry chimes in, Twitter needs to pivot. It is still 100%. Just by Elon buying it brings a buzz to the platform, regardless of what ends up happening, whether it's early, late, you know, Dennis, you're saying within a month, there's buzz, a buzz that hasn't been there in like two, three years, if not longer. And, you know, part of the problem I spoke to it earlier, I feel very strongly, the board at Twitter is toxic trash. It is hot garbage. These are people that, A, don't use Twitter, so they're not power users. They're not really invested in the success of Twitter the way it should be. For example, if someone owns a business, they need to be the face of the franchise. When you go to my dad's bakery, you can speak to me, eat with my dad. You know, like when you call, you can speak to my dad. There's there's a connection to it. Twitter has no face to the franchise. They have no connections. The the board, they don't even have Twitter accounts, bro. How is that possible? He is the absolute best thing that could happen to Twitter from that respect. The guy loves Twitter. You know what Elon is like what this whole Twitter thing? For those of you out there that have listened to Kanye West music over the last 20 years, he always had a thing for Kim Kardashian. It was all over the music. So many of his different songs. He would mention Kardashian, Kim Kardashian. He was so infatuated with it. That's what Elon was having this thing for Twitter. It was his Kim Kardashian, i.e. with Kanye West. Seriously, <laughs> it's he had this infatuation for it and he finally got it. It's like his trophy, you know, and that's why I'm saying I don't know what he does. I don't even know what he plans on doing or if he's going to do anything. But uh, at least it's a face to the franchise. Hey, so Sneed, one of my friends uh, who I used to work with is actually watching the show for the first time. So I just want to say welcome to welcome to you, Ben. Hey, big uh, shout out to Dennis's friend. Yeah, his name's Ben. And uh, ben, my he, dude, <laughs> he sent a text. Uh, he didn't put in the live live comments, but I'm just going to read what he said because I thought it was funny. He said free speech quotation marks until he shuts down that kid who's tracking all of his flights. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but um, anywho. This topic's very heated. I know you don't like it when we talk about politics. And honestly, I feel like how people are going to stand is really going to go down party lines for the most part. Um, I don't I don't really see this too much as a political thing. I only take it from face value. So I'm I had no problem discussing it. I you know, you know me, Dennis, I'm an apolitical person and I simply see it as a transaction of a businessman. I don't I don't think it's anything more than that. People may try to skew it one way or the other. But honestly, man. I think this is good for the company because the company wasn't doing well. Yeah, it might be good for the company. I just don't know if it's going to be good for the the public as a whole. Like, sure. I'll just yeah. say this: if De in an ideal world, if Dennis had his way, um, there would be like a board of directors who all had equal influence, kind of like democracy vote style, and like one person would be from the U.S., one person would be from Canada, one person would be from like the U.K., France, etc. And every time there was like a policy change, there'd be votes within mind. And it'd be like, a, as you touched on, a semi youngish enough group that understands how social media works. And as far as like moderation goes, 
um for a platform like twitter i actually think that to be honest i actually think moderation was rather lacking if you think about it i mean i know this doesn't get talked about much but cyber bullying is a real thing and i feel like all social media companies do a pretty bad job at dealing with that same thing with like harassment and other issues that can be presented in this modern connected world that we live in also the spreading of misinformation is a real problem as well and i feel like there was so many things that could have been like worked on and touched on and i feel like smart ai could have been used to also kind of compensate and help for it um on the topic of ai like i know google doesn't do the best job in the world i mean just look at the youtube comments recently every time we get like a bot posting yeah. stuff but right. like bots were a real issue on twitter as well that like really honestly needed to be addressed i mean governments use social media uh, for malicious purposes and sometimes removing and deleting posts is also an important part to ensure that actually people can share their ideas or do whatever it is that they wanted on Twitter in a safe, reliable manner. Uh, do I see Elon making changes? I think first he has to provide the edit button. <laughs> provide how many edits have been made to a tweet and then at what time. So it's a timestamp. But or, hey, the oh. or extend the tweet character so you can include the edited version of the tweet. And not for and you don't have to pay for it too, because that's actually a paid feature, believe it or not. But hey, the man that we've been waiting for and kind of stalling for has finally arrived. The legend oh, himself. Oh, snap. Moose. It's Monday Madness with Moose. That is <laughs> that is the unofficial Monday edition of the show. The, uh, the, uh, you guys are funny, man. <laughs> no, we were actually waiting for you. But uh, let's address MS comment and we'll explain why we're yeah, waiting yeah. for you, Moose. Love so it. MS, thank you for the generosity. He says he may want his legacy free speech. Uh, to be a statesman. <laughs> I think he's referring to Elon Musk wanting to become a politician. Right. 